Hello and welcome to Money Control. Uh, we are at the uh, NTLS Summit and I am in conversation with Shrikant, co-founder and CEO of Fractal AI. Uh, Shrikant, thank you so much for joining us uh, here. I uh, would like to start with this thing. So Fractal AI is an AI company where you were set out to build AI technologies almost more than 20 years ago. And it seems that 2003 is, 2023 is going to be the year for artificial intelligence and AI assistant. So uh, what according to you has changed? What's the shift going to be like now? I think the world has changed a lot since we started. It was quite foolish to have started an AI company in 2000, but looks really great in 2023. The big changes that have happened are just the evolution of computing. As computing has become cheaper and cheaper, we're able to throw more and more computing at every problem. Data sizes have multiplied and the techniques have improved quite a bit. So really accuracy of AI is a function of how much data you throw in, the amount of compute you have, and the kind of techniques, which are now deep learning techniques that you can bring in. With that combination, you're seeing super high accuracy, which means it exceeds and matches or exceeds human accuracy in a wide range of cognitive tasks. So take speech recognition, language recognition, image recognition, and so on. So that's why you're seeing the evolution of speech and the, the coming forth of these magical AI solutions like ChatGPT or DALI2 or Stable Diffusion and so on. These are basically pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible just even a year ago. So it's a very exciting time to be in AI. But the other side of this is the disruption that's happening because of this. Because now AI is not going to replace human beings, but human beings that don't use AI will be replaced by human beings that use AI. So essentially, every one of us needs to use AI so that we can become more productive. Think you're a developer and we have a $220 billion tech industry. Right? If by using something like a GitHub Copilot, I can make my coding productivity 30 to 40% higher, which means you write in English and it produces code. It produces programming code. With that, your productivity can grow up significantly. It means that the expectations in terms of how much we can produce for the same amount of time is multiplying. So it's a massively disruptive and yet a very exciting time for the tech industry. So I'm very excited to be at the NTLF, which is India's tech uh, flagship event. Right. Uh, like you quite mentioned that right now I feel like there's sort of a global battle going on between chat GPT, BARD AI and what the major tech companies could do in terms of coming out with AI technology. Uh, so as an AI company, and you have been quite a niche player in, in there and it's a b2b company so uh, could you take us uh, tell us a little bit about your business and the kind of product offerings and in innovations that you have come up with you know a lot of people don't have to know who fractal is because we serve some of the most respected ai companies and uh, big corporates of the world so the fortune 100 fortune 500 companies and we are a strategic player in helping them in making better decisions with data so our goal is to is, we call it uh, our aspiration is to power every human decision in the enterprise through AI. So what we do is we essentially bring in all their data, their, their, the decision problems they have, work backwards on those decisions, bring our algorithms and solve some very interesting problems, let's say in making their customer experience better, making reducing the friction in the customer journey or increasing the supply chain effectiveness or increasing their uh, success rate of new product introductions. So we work across a whole range of problems with big companies and we make them much more competitive because they're now using AI. We power these kinds of decisions inside companies that, that they have to make every day, millions of those decisions that they have to make every day. Right, and uh, with all the brouhaha that we are seeing around chat GPT and a lot of uh, client companies are also looking to somehow integrate AI into their businesses. Uh, so from that extent, what are the kind of use cases that you are seeing uh, probably the areas where uh, you think that uh, now uh, Fractal AI would want to venture into and how are the client conversations uh, shaping up right now? So there's an enormously high expectation that's set around AI today, thanks to some of the recent developments. I mean, we talked about, uh, you know, chat GPT, but something really impressive happened three or four months before that. There's a company called DeepMind that launched uh, what something called as Alpha Fold 2, which gave away the protein structures, the three-dimensional structures of 200 million proteins. So now AI is beginning to play a very critical role in science and technology. So we are seeing 
the expectations from clients in all sorts of their areas. Like initially, they, the major excitement is around commercial analytics. So how can I use AI and analytics to make customer experience better and so on, right? Now we are seeing even in R&D, in scientific breakthroughs, many scientific breakthroughs will happen because AI is there. So now if you think if you're a pharma company, you have to think, can I build a pharma company grounds up, right? Which is based researching molecules, find and using AI as right at the center in order to build a better pharma company. This is how companies are reinventing themselves. And we are happy to be a part of this reinvention for many of these companies. And, and in terms of uh, in-house uh, innovations that you're working on, any moonshot ideas that you're working on that you could share with us? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll give you three such ideas. Uh, one is we are working on uh, you know, quantum computing. Now, as you know, quantum computing is a sister discipline of AI. Idea is that because AI re relies so much on computing, from the traditional computing, if you use quantum computers using the quantum mechanical properties of atoms, we can significantly accelerate computing. So using that, we've worked on things like protein folding uh, using quantum chemistry, and we've published some papers. It's very exciting, but it's a research lab. The second thing we're researching on is on how human beings make decisions. What are the last second of a human brain? Of what does it do before you make a decision? If you understand that and use AI to, to accelerate, you know, how to, uh, you know, in order to make people make the right decisions, we can significantly help people achieve their own goals. So we are doing some very exciting work on what is called as computational neuroscience. The third thing I'll mention is on drone tech. So we are bringing a lot of AI technology or AI algorithms onto the drones. Now drones have cameras and they can see, but they can, they can only have, they have cameras. They don't really have a brain. So to process what we see, we need the AI algorithms. We're doing some very exciting work on those areas. So these are some big areas where we are doing some research. Considering the significant advancement in conversational AI like chat GPT, we're also trying to see if we can, for example, bring up, you know, uh, uh, let's say we are working with a gentleman called Marshall Goldsmith. He is one of the greatest executive coaches of all time. So we are working with Marshall in order to bring Marshall Goldsmith into, can, can there be a virtual Marshall Goldsmith talking and giving you a coaching advice for free? So by looking at all his books and all his articles, all his videos, we are creating, channeling Marshall Goldsmith in, in audio and video so that he can answer your questions in real time and he can replicate himself. So this is a really exciting project, which is much more on the ground today. But there are a whole host of ideas we are working on from very advanced, you know, you know, you know, long time frame R&D ideas to very immediate ideas like the Marshall Goldsmith bot. Right. And so is, is this something which is going to be close to what we are expecting from a metaverse or a Web3 to bring in? So, you know, Metaverse and Web3 are going to accelerate uh, all of this because what if we spend more and more time of our life virtually, the idea is can that virtual world start to simulate a more like a real world, right? Can I have all those, for example, if I want to do a shopping, right? Now, right now I have to go to a website and do e-commerce, but what if I can virtually walk through the aisles and shop for goods, right? So that's the idea of Metaverse to make the internet three-dimensional. It's about e internet on 3D. So it'll be, it'll be fun. But I think it's some distance away because we have so many more so problems to solve. For example, those headsets are very you know, difficult to wear. People are get, get you know sort of uh, disoriented if they are in the virtual world for, world for too long. So I do feel metaverse is a very good idea, but its time will come in about two to three years. Right, and um, and it is said that in the last two years, almost ninety percent of the world's data got generated during the years of the pandemic. So uh, I always wondered, I was curious to know what does this mean for an AI company? And uh, what was the kind of uh, a graph did you see in the last two years? What was the evolution like for you? What was the processes like? A few years back, it meant nothing that we are generating so much data because frankly, to process this much data was not easy because the computing was extraordinarily expensive. Now that has changed because by more sort of computing costs are, are continuing to go down. So it's possible to analyze the data. Most importantly, we did not know how to learn from this amounts of data. Now, chat GPT has shown that it can consume all the world's data and become so really, really intelligent in answering a lot of different questions. So the learning algorithms have also gotten better in processing all of this data. And it's not just data sitting in your databases. It's text data, it's video data, it's voice data. All of that data we can see, process and learn from it and become a very smart high IQ individual who can answer your questions, be your very intelligent assistant, solve your problems. It's really AI really augmenting humans in a very significant way that we are going to see possible 
because of the data that we have accumulated in the last few years. Right. Uh, I'm shifting the gears a bit here. Uh, last year, Fractal AI became a unicorn. And that's uh, that milestone is coming almost, I think, what, 20 years, more than 20 years after the uh, company started. So, want to get your sense of, has there ever been a sort of a FOMO that you felt that, you know, unicorn is a term that you might have to chase? And, and your milestone came right before the funding winter started. Uh, so what has been your learnings over the year? Has there been a FOMO like ever? And what's your advice going to be for the uh, entrepreneurs, tech entrepreneurs who are coming up right now? I will say don't chase valuations. Valuations should chase you. You should not be chasing valuations. What you have to do is to build a great company. What does, it, what does building a great company mean? Building a great company means your clients or your customers should be very happy. Your people that work for you should be very happy. You should be able to do meaningful things that change the world in some significant way. If you do all of these, you know, valuations, etc. will chase you and, and not the other way around. And frankly, funding winters will come, recessions will come, all of these things will happen. You have to just stick it out and you have to just develop a thick skin and just wait it out. And then eventually, if you do the right things, you can build a great company and everything else will follow. Right. And uh, also, I think FI23 uh, for you is... Uh uh, going to you had mentioned somewhere that uh, you are expecting a revenue run rate of over uh, 2000 crores uh, by the end of fi23 and uh, um, and in fact fi21 22 was the first time that you saw a loss in your books so could you could you take us a bit through the numbers what led what drove that loss figure for the first time for you guys and also the revenue run rate that you are targeting for the year so by March 23, by next month, we would be a 2,000 crore company for the year uh, fiscal fiscal 23. So we have reached that point already, so that there's no surprise there. And we have had a good growth. The la last year, we did have a loss. And this was also because of some, you know, as we were preparing for what's next in the, in the company's journey, we had to make some changes and we had to make some one-time adjustments, etc. Because of which we had a loss. This year will be profitable. And we have always been profitable for a very long time. So... If you just take out some of those ESOP and one-time kind of expenses, you know, on a cash basis, cash basis, we are very profitable. Right. And uh, over the next two to three years, uh, could you share the key business focus areas that you will be looking at? Any estimates, any targets that you have set for yourself? I think, you know, eventually our goal is that we want to serve 500 of the largest companies on the planet and work with them. You know, if they spend about $30 million with us annually, we can become a $15 billion company. We are not chasing valuation, but I think we have a path to becoming a $15 billion revenue company. And my goal is to make sure that Fractal is set up in the right way so that we can reach there. Second thing I want to uh, ensure with Fractal is that Fractal is around for a long period of time. So what are the measures that we can take today that we can build it as an institution? We have some very impressive big companies that have got founded in India and have built the company in India. I want to follow those lead and create a company that lasts the test of time. Right. And you have also been publicly speaking about planning to go public soon. So any update on that? No update as of right now. Not not something that I can speak of in, in, a, in a public forum. Right. Uh, Shrikant, that's all with our questions. Uh, thank you so much for giving your time for the interview. And I look forward to seeing your panel today and tomorrow also, I think, your sessions. Thank you. Thank you.